Hello everyone, um, my name is Isaac Huxtable. Thank you for joining us today for this Photographer's Gallery event. Um, before I introduce everyone, uh, a bit of housekeeping first. As I'm sure you all already know, this event will be happening online and through Zoom as well as Roblox. I will put a link to join our server in the chat now if anyone would like to join. Uh, so yeah, just a bit of housekeeping. This event is part of the How to Win a Photography exhibition at the Photographer's Gallery, which is still on for a number, uh, a few weeks yet left. So if you're in London, please do come down. And um, I will now, I will like, <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers. Today we're, we have, we're joined with by Daniel Udagranya, known as Abonix, Daniel Brathwaite Shirley, and Nim Nimko Kulmie Hussein. Daniel Udagranya is a Twitch artist and curate and online streamer known for her custom content to create in The Sims. Daniel Brathwaite Shirley is a digital artist focused on creating virtual archives for a black trans experience. Through digital environments, the artist centers the body, exploring identity, community, and black trans history. Nimko Kume Hussain, our moderator, is a curator and writer working at the intersection of research, culture, and art. Her practice draws from post-colonial and queer feminist perspectives, focusing actively on participatory practices that bring people together through critical, timely, and meaningful narratives. Um, with that, um, if anyone needs any help, you can message me through Zoom, and it, I, if you see me in Roblox, I'm the yellow robot, and I'll pass over to Nimko. Great, thank you, Isaac. Uh, let me just share my screen first so that everyone can see what I'm seeing. Okay, and I'm just gonna uh, move this over here. Okay, fantastic. And I hope everyone can hear me and and see what I'm seeing and see my screen. How is that? Can you That's hear me, Danielle? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, okay, just to uh, introduce my avatar right here, I'm the I'm the one with uh, this umbrella, the flower umbrella, and then we have Isaac here, uh, who is this robot, um, jumping up and up and down, and then we have. Daniel Brathwaite Shirley here uh, with the very cool um, butterfly wing. And then, yes, Evan, if you're here as well. Yes, Let me just... we have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, with the Spider Man suit. Okay, fantastic. Great. So, um, what I would like to do here with you um, is to kind of explore what we mean by utopias and to also kind of just explore. Okay, we have a very nice car. <laughs> Let's jump in. Oh my god! I think it's Daniel um, driving us around. Uh, so maybe we can drive around as we discuss what we, um, you know, what utopias mean to us. So what do you think, Daniel Ebanex? Oh, How do you drive? <laughs> I'm just gonna give everyone uh, a 360. Go on. I love it. It's so cute. Yes. <laughs> And it's suddenly nice as well, so the perfect, perfect nice drive. Um, um, so who um, would like to maybe start? Oh, it's me! Oh, I'm. <laughs> you should never have given me. The, you should never give me the wheel. <laughs> I, I think I, I have to take um, myself four times. I'm not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is owned by Danielle whose name here, by the way, is Virtual Transmist. Oh yeah, that's me, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and let me just uh, share the chat here as well. Everyone is welcome to just like, um, you know, share their thoughts and comments here with us. Um, but yeah, maybe we will start with the question of what utopias mean to us. Yeah, I mean, I think a utopia in its essence is a, you know, a world or uh, environment where every, it's everything to you. It means, it means finding your inner peace, but outside. You know, being able to experience what me, what inner peace to you means in a in a either world, a real or virtual world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How about you, Daniel? Um, yeah, for me, I think a utopia means 
I don't know. I don't think I believe in utopias. So I think a, a utopia, I think, is maybe a a world we build that is not based off the current world structures that we currently live on, that mm -hmm. we use to imagine um, ways in which we could live and breathe more easily. Mm. Yes, yes. So do you see it as kind of like a, a tool for like imagining otherwise, or do you see it as something that we have to kind of very much build together and kind of imagine together? Because obviously I think that the utopias are very much something that we are part of as, you know, it's not just, or maybe there could be like a utopia for just one person. What do you think? I think it's an individual thing, to be honest. Everyone's utopia, yeah. I think, looks different to them because um, mm -hmm. we all have individual and sometimes very specific wants for what we want to experience, which will, like Danielle said, make life breathing a lot easier. Um, mm -hmm. And not, I don't feel like everyone's utopia would look the same. There can be similar aspects of um, what a utopia could look like. Uh, but I think in in its essence, a, a utopia is very much a, a unique and holistic desire of a person's what they mm. want Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what do you think in terms of like virtual worlds as well? And um, so, you know, where we have kind of the, the, the ability and the tools to pretty much imagine whatever and build whatever. Um, what do you think, Daniel? Um, Is it something that you've also worked on a lot? Yeah, like I often, sorry, I'm, I'm now I'm thinking, sorry, my separate thing is now I'm thinking of Danielle and if your uh, Twitch setup feels like a utopia during it. Um, and I'm like, okay. that's really amazing. Because <laughs> when you said it as an individual, I'm thinking of, ah, when you stream, are you building that utopia for yourself in which like you can have that kind of, um, those people that you want to be with you, even though they're not with you, because your setup is really nice, especially. Um, and so like, when you said Agreed. that, I immediately jumped to uh, what you do. And I was like, it, I, if I, when I watch Twitch, I always think like, oh man, this person, is they're in a really nice place and it seems like they've really made sure that that environment suits them and suits the chat um mm -hmm. and so yeah I, I, apologies um my mind went straight to like wanting to ask danielle if if twitch when you're doing it feels a little bit like maybe not building utopia but putting yourself in an environment that is is making sure that it can support you so you can do what you love doing yeah i mean absolutely i think that's such a good point sometimes Twitch can be very toxic, but that's what the block and ban button is for. And in the sense, if someone tries to come and disrupt or disturb the utopia and the safe space that I'm curating for myself and my community, then they immediately get a ban because we come through, we play games, we chat, we, we talk up a mess. And that is part of what I guess we're building, which is a really nice community. And it, it makes it, you know, it makes you question is having a community that aligns with you a utopia in itself as well so mm. it can be an environment it can be a space it can be a community in itself as well mm. but yeah no, I definitely amazing. feel that this space that I've created like built up is a space for for peace it was definitely a, a piece of peace for my brain and mm. and then live streaming is inviting people into this piece and if anyone tries to disrupt that <laughs> You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, is there like ways how you create these spaces and how you make them safe for like the community um, and how you build those, you know, infrastructures and, and structures in general um, that are quite, how do I say, kind um, and accepting, maybe? Yeah, I mean, in general, I think people it's all about energy as well and I think when you mm -hmm. attract the kind of energy um that you put out so I'm putting out a very um you know I'm gonna say, I, like, well, I like to say good vibes and positive but I know positive vibes so there's toxic positivity but I'm very much open like hey if I'm having a bad mental health day just you're, you're gonna know about it but I'm very open and transparent as a human being and I hope that's what um, draws people to the community knowing that they aren't tuning into someone who's just showing up to show up and putting on a fake smile and 
you know, we have, um, we discuss a lot of mental health. We also have a extension to allow people to choose their pronouns as well, so that people are able to um, not be kind of misgendered or, you know, to know that this is a space where whatever pronoun they decide to have is a welcome space. Um, and yeah, again, I have uh, moderators in place for if there's anything that goes left or people try to come in and, you know, kick up any kind of storm or any kind of mess, any negativity, any uh, misogyny, racism, homophobia, transphobia, they're gone. They're gone. Mm -hmm. So that is a definitely a safe space that um, not just myself, but my community are also curating. Mm. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay, Take here we time. go, and next, uh, and then explore some more. Maybe yes, I can also so. kind of work as the the guide. So if we go forward, and I'm just going to show you. Oh my god, I've been looking for animations. I've been trying to dance. Yes. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at my way downtown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a car again. I think. Um, whoever got us this amazing red truck. Passenger, hundred percent. Oh my god. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Yes, okay, I'm gonna jump in and. Um, oh, you're yes, so interact. Good. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to sit up. I'm just gonna. Okay, are you gonna leave me? <laughs> oh, you're so <laughs> <little>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I'm kind of there. Maybe not. Are you? Anyways, in? let's drive. Let's drive. Let's drive. You well, are surely not. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I can um... <laughs> with the dust. You know what? I'm gonna pick you back, someone. Um, so okay. please, I'm gonna interact with. Okay, someone wasn't in, uh, available. So, um, Ebonic, I'm gonna interact with you. I got so you. I'm gonna yes, pick you back. Inter I think you have to. Back. Yes, let's be friends. Beautiful. There I'm not go. gonna jump. Beautiful. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. I got you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so oh. the next <laughs> these new tires. <laughs> Who's driving? No, it <laughs> might be Isaac. I'm loving it. <laughs> Revoke his license. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize for the driving. I, I tested the Don't apologize. I did test the driver. <laughs> I think it's good that it is a bumpy road. Okay, beautiful. What is that? Oh. oh, okay. Wow, oh, beautiful. Okay, something's happening. Um, oh. We're in a forest. So maybe now I could ask uh, the second question, which is, should we pursue utopias? Should we move kind of uh, towards utopias and think about utopias? What do you think? Should we what? So your mic cut out for a little bit for me, sorry. Pursue, pursue utopias. Uh, should we pursue utopias? Yes. I feel like in some ways we we are in that direct uh, going in that direction, especially virtually. I definitely feel like people are trying mm. to create their own um, utopias within the virtual world because yeah, real life is <laughs> stressful. <laughs> 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 the real world is real stressful. So I definitely see um, uh, people creating kind of even like little worlds like this, like this is someone's little utopia that they want to yes. invite people into. And um and if people also align with this as being a utopia, then oh great, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign in. Like this is gonna be my new space to hang out. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I do think people um, are on the on the way to create or already creating utopias virtually. Yeah. I feel, it's a hard question because for me, like I think of like when I think of utopias or, or spaces, I think I instantly go to like MMOs and I think about the community that creates like small worlds in which like more and more people want to join because the community in there is so good. Mm. Um, like RuneScape and Final Fantasy um, around Reborn are like really good examples of just having really nice communities. Um, mm. Like or by on large, um, and so I feel like online. Like those exist. Like I've made a lot of friends in VR chat and um, 
like through interaction in online spaces where it feels like you can kind of make a list of rules that people have to abide by and if they don't they're gone mm. but in the real world in terms of like going toward utopias i'm like my utopia is going to be different to yours um and that small thing that's different if we magnify it to the whole world becomes huge mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. for me it's more for me it's more about creating enough spaces in the world that everyone can go to somewhere and actually feel like they're able to to feel, be comfortable um mm. like i don't know a single place i live in berlin i don't know a single place i can go to where a bunch of black people can sit down and talk about games like i don't know a single yes place. Mm. a single place that I, I can go and get coffee with trans people and know that there's other trans people that are doing work and i can just do work around them like i don't know any places like this and so for me like yeah, we can move towards utopias, but we haven't even got the basic places of having space yet. Mm. You know? And so I, yeah. I'm feeling really strong. We need to um, get uh, infrastructure. We need infrastructure mm -hmm. before we can. Foundation, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like before we can build this idea of like, what does it mean to <clears throat> a, a, a new set of like laws in place and a way in which everyone can live and abide by something that makes them all feel comfortable. I feel like we need to talk about, right, what's the infrastructure that we actually require so that I can sit next to you on the train and, and feel okay, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely agree. And also, like, about the fact where we would have multiple utopias, I kind of think about it also as having maybe different servers, right? So we can always engage with those utopias that we feel connected to. Mm. And it's just about kind of understanding each other's needs and hopes and aspirations. Mm. But I, f I feel like something that Danielle said, um, I know I was supposed to be using your Twitch name, I've completely forgot it, I'm really sorry. No, you're fine, babe, Ebonics. Ebonics. Um, well, something that Ebonics said when they said, uh, like, they have moderators, um, and something I think is really amazing about Twitch is that you, you, your moderation is very transparent. And there's a bunch of people that know your moderation and can run work by it and help others abide by it and make sure other people feel safe. And I feel that with, with a lot of the big tech companies that like transparency is just not, that's not present at all, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, and so I feel like that's like a really amazing um, thing that you have. And I don't really know much about the setup of having um, moderations in Twitch. But I think it's like I often think of moderation on these platforms as as like work, as real work that mm. is required for that community. But when we usually if we're thinking of like um, the metaverse or even online or something, a lot of those um, moderation teams are just invisible. Mm. Yeah, so it makes me think of like what what does it mean to have a utopia when the people running it are completely invisible and you don't even know when you're skirting across a line. Mm. 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 That's a really good point. Mm. That's, a, that's a really good point. And I'm also kind of thinking about um, how moderation is also about power. So thinking about, you know, how, who can moderate and who is kind of allowed to be in these spaces. Right. You know, I think it's very important to kind of think about, okay, who's doing the gatekeeping then? Um, what kind of people are we making part of this community? A part of this space? Who is building this space? Mm. Yeah, you have to choose the right people, honestly, because <laughs> you give somebody wrong, the wrong individual like a level of power that can affect, how, you know, and it reflects actually on you as well, like whether the, the platform or utopia that you're building, um, the type of people that you would probably give power to to help enforce the rules of what makes that utopia the utopia can that yeah. directly affect um the rep like your reputation and have an impact on how people because it's, they're they're kind of like an extension of you in a way because mm -hmm. they're rep yeah they're representing um what it is that you're trying to create and build up isn't it so mm. yeah, you have to be very mindful about who you're choosing but i, I do i do agree completely with what daniel said the Kind of moderation of big techs even when i've worked with big brands or when twitch has you know ever wanted to put me on the front page which you know the front page can bring you thousands and thousands of viewers and there's been occasions when they haven't offered moderation 
and I've had to say to them, okay, so are you going to, you know, because this is, I'm now giving um, you the ability to open up my space to like thousands of people. Are you going to help um, buff up the moderation that I've got in place to ensure that my space continues to stay safe? Because, you know, my moderators do a great job, but when there's thousands of people coming in and you just don't mm. know what's going to happen, the additional mm -hmm. support is, is definitely needed. And the more people you do have in there that are clearly moderating, the le I, I do find that as a deterrent for people to actually try and do, like, say something. But yeah, having visible moderators is great. Hello, chicken. <laughs> I think the chicken agrees. <laughs> Um, also talking about moderation, um, just to kind of like um, share with our audience as well, could you uh, talk about what we mean by moderation and why we need that in certain spaces? Uh, yeah, so moderation in its essence is uh, ensuring that there are individuals supporting what it is that you're building. Um, and so I have a set of rules in place on my stream. And what that means is that if there's anyone breaking those rules, then my moderators um, either give them warnings or then or just completely ban them outright. Um, and that is just to continue to keep the peace of the stream, but also keep mm -hmm. it a safe space because I'm just not here for the toxicity that can come with being, especially being a black woman on a gaming platform. There's yeah. a lot of toxicity um, and misogyny and misogynoir that comes yeah. my way. Um, mm. And so having moderators is essential, especially uh, being part of the demographic that I am, um, being black, being LGBTQ, being a woman, mm. like there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, things that make me a target on the platform. So yeah. having moderators um, really does support keeping the safe space that I'm building up safe um, and that so that I then also can keep the energy going for the stream because I don't want to necessarily have to stop my flow to deal with a racist you know yeah so my moderators also like they handle that so that I can just continue to deliver the vibes and the good energy that keeps the stream you know going and popping mm -hmm. absolutely But yeah, they're okay, really important, we... and it is a job. I, mean, mm -hmm. I remember you saying earlier, it's, it is like a job. So I make sure, you know, my moderators are reminded that they are very much appreciated. And, <laughs> you know, there's also, they also have um, a platform called Pally that uh, um, you can use to help support your moderators as well if they sign up, like financially, because again, they do it out of, out of choice and they don't have to do it. So Pally is a really good way to also show them like, hey, like I, whatever I get from my like Twitch subs, a bit's gonna go to you because I wanna show you that I appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. Amazing, thank you for sharing that, Ebony. Of course. Let's continue our journey. Um, so, see, follow me and let's see what we can find here. Okay, so there's, there's something happening here. Um, did I, I just don't know it? what it is saying. <laughs> so I built a house though. I did build a house for us. You Wait, did? what? Where? Yeah, just down here. <laughs> oh, okay, let's go there. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, I often think, um, like, I often have dreams of uh, moderation being a bit more like art curation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not in, not in terms of like it you selecting a bunch of people that can be on the platform but in terms of um changing who does that job mm. um, and making sure that you're um keeping those those people in power of moderation um clear and actually continuing for the community because communities always change especially when they grow mm. um, and like i often think of like how would we for example um, do a kind of Twitch version of moderation on Instagram um, because oh. the power of moderation of Instagram is is op let's say opaque at best um, and it's like you usually have a bunch of people and you build an algorithm you build a community yourself and then um, your bunch of your friends get banned for 
nothing you don't even know why there's no feedback yeah. in anything mm. um and so i always think about how to oh my gosh sounds in this game um <laughs> how to like in, increase the moderation when the scope gets so big mm-hmm. it's possible for it just to be one particular group and one particular voice yeah i love that God, yeah, Instagram is a really good example of that as well because it's uh, it's a mess sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and it like changes from person to person. And um, you know, as Corey X Kenshin was talking about like YouTube's moderation, mm. how he thinks it's like very racist and it's based basically on like when he does something, he gets banned for the video, and then Markiplier does the same video, and there's no ban and the no same. Ban. Content. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking like that is an issue with the moderation people if it's if um, we don't even know if it's bots or if it's actual people mm-hmm. but whoever, whoever it is there's a bias within who is being banned it's not yeah. actually the content it's the appearance of the person um, and so I'm wondering right so it seems like all these the big ones the massive ones are doing moderation based on personal gain Mm. Um, not community no dem- no um democracy nothing to do with that it's just literal personal mm. game i mean youtuber prime example got rid of the dislike button none of us wanted it none of us wanted mm-hmm. it on the platform yeah, yeah. The dislike button to stay you know we all reinstalled it using a little add-on um but they got rid of it to say it was safeguarding community members, but it just meant because they didn't want their videos to be disliked anymore. Mm. Um, and so like, to me, that's like a, a way that, that uses moderation to silence, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. For me, they're building you ut- a utopia that enables them to make as much money off you as possible and they enable yeah. them to silence people without you being able to even question um, clearly with that evidence part. why... Mm-hmm how they're silencing people because you know people mm. can i can hear people with Corey at kenshin saying you're just you're just upset and you're using the race card or whatever as a lot of youtubers do and uh, say this and obviously he's not he's he's going making a really good point he's that, been doing yeah. this for years but like because there's no transparency and there's no clear reason and he has to then infer it which i'm i'm sure his feelings are completely correct mm-hmm. um, but now it means that there's always a way to fight against it. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents on it. <laughs> no, absolutely, I agree. I feel like, yes, it's very important to kind of like think about what kind of structures, what kind of, um, you know, that, like who are the people who have been creating this world and who's been kind of, who are behind all of this and also like the power. Because we can see here, like, you know, the ability of, making these decisions um you know who really has the power of, of making them and i think this is very important in terms of thinking about what kind of worlds are being built and by whom mm. um can i quickly ask i'm so sorry my love um that the volume on roblox just comes down a little bit if you don't mind let me see if i go back if you press escape and then um, in the settings, just my brain, my brain couldn't. Much better, much yeah. better. <laughs> because I thought it was just me and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, no, no, no. I get, my brain was not processing anything. <laughs> and I, I really love the also, ever yes, had. I'm so sorry. No, but you're We fine. love the flat. The, the house is amazing. It's gorgeous. Great. <laughs> beautiful um but yes uh, another thing that i wanted to ask you is about avatars so you know how here kind of like in this virtual world um you can very much create um these avatars and you can really wear these avatars who no one really knows um what you are like in real life um could you maybe talk about a little bit how or like what are your kind of thoughts on avatars do you want to go daniel oh god <laughs> go on, sure um <laughs> yeah like the first uh kind of i mean i'm sure everyone's done this um when i was younger like i used avatars to like experiment on things in the real world that i was too scared to do so mm-hmm. i think the first time it was on a game called dragon's dogma which is a game i love i can't wait for the second one to come out anyway um <laughs> 
So this is a it's a game like a fantasy game, but the the thing they let you do is create your first character uh, with a really um very very loose character customization. So you can almost create anything. So I created my uh, self as I wanted to be, and then you mm-hmm. had to create like a shroud that follows you around, like you can send off to other people, and kind of is like your um uh like a hollowed out individual that does that works with you that that are, they are real, but they also somehow live within the death world um and so i made my my i would call my like dead self that i wanted to get rid of and so i played through this game and i would play this game as um, a way to kind of mentally transition so that Mm. i wanted to live in one way but knowing that my past experience would always follow me uh, from behind and getting used to that and saying that's okay um and so for me, like, I think avatars can be a really great way to, like, explore things. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely 100%. Um, and as well as, like, just kind of uh, try out things and, and live in your truth or live in a, a falsehood or completely. Um, but I don't think they're um, a replacement for you in the real world. And I don't, I'm not saying anyone mm. is saying this, but I, I, I don't think they, they are. I don't think you need to have an avatar that, needs to replace that because an avatar can mean nothing to you as well you know Mm -hmm. it could just be an art piece it could just be something fun you made with your friends um so to me like i i all personally i always felt an attachment to my avatars in some way i felt like i'm Mm imbuing them with something just by making them like something's Mm -hmm. on my day um but i don't think that it has to be that way um and for a lot of my friends like their avatar is the real self and the the human form in real life doesn't mean anything to them anymore you know Mm -hmm. Um, which is another yeah I mean I I can't talk for them of course but I I think it's like that's enabled them to live in the the real world in a in a way that they feel more comfortable Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah I feel like they can be really powerful in in ways that the are a bit a little obscure like I, I don't even know how they how they have been so powerful for me but I really feel like an attachment towards when I play with my old games I'm like oh my god I remember it brings back so many memories <laughs> you know, even just like naming I used to name my Pokemon characters names I mm. want to change my name to oh <laughs> love that. Love that. so I have these like this Pokedex of <laughs> all these different names so like yeah, it was, and that's not changing an avatar. That's just changing a mm. name. So I just feel mm. like that it's just something about that, the action of making them that I feel is yeah. so great, um, rather than just the final finished project. Hey. It's not the way I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Evanik? Uh, I completely agree. I definitely feel mm. like there's um, yeah. avatars are an extension of yourself I guess um and they do open up a world of ways for you to be creative to experiment to view you know give people to the opportunity to view you how you view yourself if that makes sense you know you can create a if you feel like inside you want to be purple with flowing hair with a tail like this is the, if that's how you feel Absolutely. inside then that's and that's how you can want to project yourself um in the virtual world and absolutely you know that's that's what it's there for it's there for you to experiment Mm. um Mm. and kind of where I've done my work in kind of the avatar world it was more so because I was someone who wanted to see herself in a virtual but couldn't do so because there wasn't content available for us to do that Mm. so the representation um in virtual spaces is kind of next to next to none like it's really bad especially if you're black or a person of color had getting braids locks curls all of those kind of hairstyles that would reflect how you do look in the real world just weren't readily available so in some ways I also felt like um you know black and people of color in the virtual world didn't often create themselves how they how they present in the real world because the, Mm -hmm. the content wasn't available or we haven't been seen in games if that makes sense so we haven't been visible in games enough to even feel like we have the option of creating ourselves in a virtual Mm -hmm. space um Mm -hmm. so I do think that there's um I think it's getting it's definitely getting better and there's but there's still a lot of work to do where representation is in uh involved but um one of the first avatar 
games that I think I experienced was Habbo Hotel. Yes, <laughs> yes, I can remember that. <laughs> oh, too many hours spent in that bloody hotel. Yes. yes. <laughs> checked in but you never check out (laughs) (laughs) true and um yeah that was just you know a a a cute little virtual world you make your character you you make some of the bestest of friends that you will never meet in this life and you know it's (laughs) you know I I think you also yeah it it was just it's a really in intriguing experience because the psychology behind it as well as uh, like Daniel was saying people kind of I guess create the virtual world create their avatar in the virtual world and that extension allows them to function differently in the real world and um, Mm. because they know that they have they have a space and they have a persona that they can tap into when they're kind of done being in the the real world um because I mean I've, I definitely did it when I was younger that's what have I tell an IMVU IMVU was definitely one of my escapes and I could completely change the look of my character at the snap of the finger if I wasn't feeling this hairstyle okay I'm done next hairstyle next makeup next outfit and it could just be done so quickly and you don't have that um element of waiting for your hair to grow and you know you're not allowed to dye your hair for another week because you've just bleached it so there's, you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's elements of being able to just change yourself depending on how you're currently feeling um mm. within on, on your avatar in the virtual space which is really one thing that I find that draws me to it that I can just I'm very indecisive so I will change things <laughs> within 30 seconds of making my, my mind <laughs> No, I can definitely remember how her hotel as well. I can remember that you could also change your skin color. Mm-hmm. Is this, do you remember that? I yeah, think, yeah. I think you could. And you can like um, get that flash and kind of like get different objects, um, interact with house. other people, yeah. yes, uh, chat with other people. Um, and you never knew actually who they really were. And you still were able to kind of connect with some people and create your own parties Mm -hmm. yeah your own world but I can't remember whether there was any moderation oh (laughs) (laughs) when you do it there was absolutely no moderation yes yes and I remember being like 13 or something and I was there um but I can definitely also relate to what um Danielle you were saying about how avatars and and different kind of virtual worlds uh, allow you to to Kind of experiment explore different options and uh, for me for example it was very much um, practicing for example femininity or masculinity and seeing like what happens but as you said Evanex, you know there wasn't really a lot of options for us you know for us to really digitally represent um, ourselves the way we are we didn't mm. have the options you couldn't buy those things you couldn't buy the hairstyles mm. and nowadays we can and I think it is because there are people like us behind these games and behind these roles you know making those decisions and being like hey this is important <laughs> like we need to have more you know like a variety of, of not just hairstyles but all kinds of things yeah completely mm. um, but I can see that it, yes go ahead go ahead yeah sorry um it, it's made me think about and maybe because you just mentioned at the beginning I'm thinking about sims and I'm thinking about the, the how sims change from sims one to oh, God, I don't even know yeah. what they're on mm. now um sims mm. 10,000 but also how like the structures of um I guess like money changed you know like mm. in sims one came with like you know the little tools that you could barely do anything with um not much uh character options um but at least they were all there and then in sims 2 they're all there but then there's loads of expansion passes and then sims 3 i think they started introducing more paywalls and then sims 4 was a mess oh mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh babes the amount of different types of packs is my and then the amount the quant the quantity of said packs mm-hmm. right An expansion right. a game a stuff a kit is a, it's a lot <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I remember when I was because um, me and my sister was so into Sims 2 we were like obsessed with it and I remember when Sims 3 came out and there was less stuff yeah and I'm like mm. what but yeah, where's yeah. all the normal things and then realizing like you have to buy the expansion pass so you buy one expansion pass and you realize the thing you wanted wasn't in that one it was in the yeah. other one. 
to to the next pack and then they had the online (laughs) like you had to then actually use your money to buy the stuff on this online thing that you could download the stuff from it was an absolute mess (laughs) and i felt like like, mm. modder not not, um like mods like actual like when they mod the games yeah like those are saved save me because i'm like okay yeah. oh yeah someone has made this for me so they can just either give it to me <laughs> like, yeah. yeah um but I, I wonder i mean we haven't i wonder about like what that feels like what does it feel like because for me mods when people create their own mods and there's like a mod that i think the first mod i played was like a max Payne mod where it made max Payne into the matrix um oh wow and I and I love them like I love them because it just means that like the game that was never your for you has suddenly as a skin that makes it all for you yeah. you know yeah. and and that's made by a community that's not supported by the actual devs you know exactly and it makes me think about like I'm wondering or I'm praying this is just a this is a, this is a utopic thought mm. I'm praying that like that sort of like mods uh can kind of continue and actually be supported by because I don't think we've really had a, a virtual world that has a huge modding community that's supported by the developers maybe I'm probably missing out on loads but mm, yeah. not so much a ge- game but you know, I think Second Life and IMVU oh, those true. those two are there the, it's literally the foundation of its even ability to run is by the people who create mm-hmm. the, you know their mods and their clothing but I get what you mean in terms of like an actual game game um mm-hmm. like exact like kind of like you know the sims I think mm-hmm. in some ways they, they've started opening up um and started working with creators to mm-hmm. implement stuff into the game so um they consulted with me on adding like a hundred skin tones to the game which was like oh, a no. massive thing so I supported them that because of the work that I've been doing like it mm. was highlighted to them okay she's doing stuff to make the game better so mm. let's get her and a bunch of others who are doing the, the work that we should have been doing and so we mm. consulted on the skin tones we consulted on like the hair so that's when they started adding like baby hairs and stuff to the game because yeah. we consulted on that and they added nails and I've got like a set of nails in the game as well because mm-hmm. I'm like yeah they're gonna they're gonna have these they're gonna have these in game <laughs> And um, so I definitely agree. A lot of like mainstream games in itself don't have uh, the don't support the modern community as such. But mm-hmm. I think platforms like Second Life and IMVU, where the economy is literally because of mm-hmm. the like individual people who've put their work into the yeah. The, I don't know if it's a game. I don't even know what to call it. Like, it. I guess it is an online game, but no one really plays the stuff. It's just they have avatars <laughs> they have avatars and they do role play so i don't yeah. know if it's a game <laughs> no that's wicked that's amazing that you have a i'm gonna i'm mm. gonna i don't even have the sims right now i'm gonna get that i'm gonna get your pack you know what next Just... month the sims is coming out for free for every like <gasps> every platform amazing so amazing. for pc console it's gonna be out for free so if you get it on pc money back, well, the sim- wow, wow. what's going on is it free to play now what's happening well i don't know about all that <laughs> <laughs> no that's wicked that's amazing i love mm. i love to hear that all i can say is uh, amazing uh, you're amazing thanks for doing that that's awesome absolutely absolutely i agree Thank absolutely you, um, let me see. So uh, it's 20 past. Isaac, what do you think? Do you have any questions? Um, is there anything that our audience wants to ask Daniel or Ebony? Um, I don't think we have any questions yet, but the message to the audience, if anyone has any questions, would like to ask anything, mm-hmm. you can put them in the chat and um, either myself or Nimco will highlight them. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of any questions. Um, before we get any questions, I have one actually. Um, yeah. Around avatars and character customization, what do you think makes a good character customization tool within video games? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> first and foremost, being able to choose your pronouns. I yeah. think that's because you initially start with writing your name. I'm, I'm, I'm using mm. the Sims as an example. Write your name, choose your pronouns, choose your frame. If you want a masculine mm. frame, if you want a feminine frame. I hate when they kind of completely segregate like 
yes. here's being a man here's being a woman like yes. I, I hate that so being able to just choose a frame that you want to go by and choosing your pronouns number one two skin tones Mm -hmm. father god if i load up another game in 2022 and we are ashy i'm going to find somebody (laughs) how can in 2022 Mm. i'm seeing that uh the options for darker skin tones have hints of just uh, the darker you get the ashier and grayer the skin tones get sorry we are melanin rich we come in many different hues we come in cool warm and neutral undertones so i cannot imagine having a character creation engine where the options for skin tones is on a there's like maybe four or five options and the darker options are just a gray grayish and ashy so that's negatory agreed hair Mm -hmm. we are more than just an afro and the gel braids you know the one that just go all the way back we are more than Mm -hmm. that and then the little twirl um, and maybe some thick locks. I think that's what a lot of devs in the past thought that that's how we come um, come in hairstyle wise. So having a plethora of options like our straight 1A counterparts have, um, mm-hmm. absolutely a need for us to have as many options as our counterparts have because it's not hard. And if someone who has not gone to school to develop hair can do it, then absolutely game dev should be doing it. Mm-hmm. absolutely my rant is done <laughs> thank you Evanik. how about you Danielle I mean everything you just said perfect I mean I'm not <laughs> I can't add to that um I think everything that you just said um and and just to know that like I always feel like there should it should never be like snap options there should always be like ways to tweak things mm. to like add people in that just don't don't fit into the con- conventions like you know mm-hmm. um, because I, I always feel like these devs are just like do you know what we're gonna do we're gonna just consult someone add these things and then we're gonna keep then we're not gonna pay them next time we'll just keep the things they added forever yeah. and then someone yeah. else is like hey but actually can you add this one too and they say no no we already added like when um when animal crossing added the black hairstyles huh and it was like, yeah. oh, so you finally had, had black hairstyles after the, I don't know how many years you've been out, even out mm-hmm. since Nintendo 64 in Japan, mm-hmm. long ass time. And now you finally had black hairstyles. Yeah, I give us what, like six, seven black hairstyles. But they even patched in because it wasn't even in the in, yeah, in the initial, like, patched in, they, you, in yeah. the, um, New Horizons, if there was none to begin with. Like they had to even <laughs> patch in like uh, some months later the black hair was we'll just like ah so where, what are we then what are we right exactly <laughs> and it's always feels like an it always feels like an after four every yeah. single time it should That's not be really. a it should be a day one thing it should be like not a not a dlc it should mm-hmm. be there. um so yeah i don't have anything to add but just like no dlcs of us have us on the team if you're doing if you're doing character design mm-hmm. have the characters maybe in the room so you don't have to suddenly think of something outside of who you are because mm. you can't look at that all. Absolutely. Yeah, on the back of that, just, yeah, paywalls. Don't put a paywall between us and being able to represent ourselves in a game. Like, that mm-hmm. is the one of the biggest um, headaches I have. Even, like, mobile games. I hate in mobile games when they give you, like, if they if they have 10 hair options then guaranteed one and a half of those hair options are going to be a black hairstyle Mm -hmm. and then the rest of the black hairstyles are locked behind the paywall where you have to use an x amount of gems or coins to unlock it and I was Mm -hmm. remember first seeing that I was like I was so livid I was like why do we have to pay to be able to see ourselves in the game like what is Mm -hmm. this so yes paywalls are a no-no agreed Um, I think that I think that might be all the time we have for questions today. But thank you. <laughs> I want to thank Danielle, Danielle, and Nimka. Thank you so thank much you. for such a engaging and enjoyable um, conversation. Uh, Danielle, thank you for building this great house as well. I really enjoyed <laughs> uh, going around it. And um, yeah, thank you all for for the three, the three of you for uh, your insights. And thank you to the audience for, for joining us. Um, if anyone wants to join the server, it's still live. So 
the, the link is in the chat. Um, I'll put it again, but anyone can join, have fun, drive around, build a house, build a utopia. But thank you all for coming. Thanks, thank guys. you so much. Shall we get a selfie? Shall we get a selfie out yes, of the front of the house before yes. we leave? Okay, let's go. <laughs> How do we leave? <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh my god, I can't even take pictures. Okay, here we, oh my god, I can't move. Okay, beautiful. So I'm gonna do this. Oh god. Oh wait. <laughs> I don't know um, how to move. I don't I can't stop clapping. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. Let me come forward. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you guys um stand like that, and I'm just gonna do a round and then come back like this. Okay, why is this coordination harder than I expected? Cool. Okay, beautiful. This it is, is good. Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> we can use this maybe. And we can let's let's see whether we can have okay. virtual transmit in the background as well. Beautiful. Okay, let's take this. I like this. Um I'm just gonna do a screenshot as well. Just to remember this. Okay, everyone smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Daniel, Daniel, and Isaac, and our audience as well, and the CPT. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Ciao. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.